to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Today... Today, today was the last day of this year's Supreme Court session. It's been a real roller coaster ride in that I am nauseous and scared we're all gonna die. <laughs> in the last week alone, the justices have weakened the separation of church and state, overturned Roe v. Wade, struck down a 109-year-old New York law limiting guns in public, and today, they dropped a ruling that limits the EPA's regulation of carbon dioxide emissions from power plants. <laughs> What are you thinking, Supreme Court? It's the Environmental Protection Agency. If they can't limit emissions, then the agency can't protect the environment. They're gonna have to change what the P stands for. Maybe Environmental Punch Dolphins in the Taint Agency. <laughs> and the conservative majority... That graphic took me by surprise a little bit. <laughs> I believe that was non-consensual on the Dolphins' part. <laughs> the conservative majority knows how dangerous this is, especially Chief Justice Roberts, seen here looking at the Supreme Court's poll numbers. <laughs> In his opinion, Justice Roberts writes, capping carbon dioxide emissions at a level that will force a nationwide transition away from the use of coal may be a sensible, quote, solution to the crisis of the day, but a decision of such magnitude and consequence rests with Congress itself. Hey, Johnny Bobby, this is an emergency. You don't stand on the side of the pool watching somebody drown and say, oh, uh, well, actually, Mr. Lifeguard, you can't jump in and save him, because I saw you eat less than half an hour ago, okay? <laughs> There are rules. In her... Elmo song... <laughs> In her scathing dissent, Justice Kagan writes, the court appoints itself instead of Congress or the expert agency, the decision-maker on climate policy. I cannot think of many things more frightening. Really? <laughs> Have you seen their other decisions? <laughs> With these maniacs in charge, our only hope is that the smokestacks put on a condom. <laughs> now, there was some not terrible Supreme Court news today because Katanji Brown Jackson was sworn in <laughs> as the court's first black female justice. Yeah. I agree. I 100% agree. Jackson swearing in means that the Supreme Court, for the first time, will have four female justices among its nine members. That's pretty great. That's pretty solid. Really and in solidarity, Amy Coney Barrett bought them all matching outfits. <laughs> now, it's a nice gesture. It's a nice gesture, though. <laughs> Justice Jackson credits three factors with her success: hard work big breaks, and tough skin, as opposed to the three factors of Brett Kavanaugh's success. Beer, beer, too many beers. The man, remember him? Remember him? Remember that guy? Story. Remember that guy. Uh, the man who appointed Justice Jackson missed her big moment because President Biden was in Europe today wrapping up a NATO summit with a big announcement. We've invited two new members to join NATO. It was a historic act. Finland and Sweden. Finland and Sweden are joining NATO. If, if they make it through Pledge Week. <laughs> Scandinavian leaders, Scandinavian leaders, you will be paddled by Jens Stolenberg. <laughs> I am going to paddle your butt until it's so swollen and shiny I can see my face in it. <laughs> Come on, the plebs. <laughs> of course, Biden being Biden, he briefly announced a third new member. Some of the American press will remember when I got a phone call from the leader of Finland saying, could he come and see me? We got on the telephone. He suggested we call the leader of, of Switzerland. Switzerland, my, good, my goodness. I'm, I'm getting really anxious here about expanding NATO. Oh, Sweden. Sweden. <laughs> Sweden, Switzerland. Sweden, Switzerland, Swaziland, Swallows and Capistrano. The important thing, we got some new palookas coming down the line are really looking to know their onions. I mean, the meatballs. Anyway, <laughs> welcome Sweden and Furby. I mean, Finland. 
Mamma Mia, here we go again. Bork, bork, bork. <laughs> the... The NATO summit was right after the annual meeting of the G7. Now, the Russian invasion of Ukraine was on everyone's mind. In fact, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson jested that G7 leaders could take their clothes off to show that we're tougher than Putin. Oh, my God, Boris. <laughs> Stop trying to start parties. Let's all take our clothes off. It's OK. It's a work summit. Last one in the hot tub is a damp pasty. Come on, Olaf. Don't you want to find out if the thatched roof matches the haystack? <laughs> I don't. It's a disturbing image. <laughs> In response, Canadian Premier Justin Trudeau joked that Western leaders could try to match Putin's naked torso pictures with a bare-chested horseback riding display. <laughs> yes, because that's how you show the Russians who's boss. Who could forget the Potsdam conference when Harry Truman intimidated Stalin with a nip slip? <laughs> Give him hell, Harry. Putin wasn't amused by the comments. Today, Putin responded, I don't know how they wanted to get undressed above or below the waist, but I think it would be a disgusting sight in any case. <laughs> below the waist? So, Boris is Johnson? <laughs> I I was very gentle. Oh, yeah. I was very gentle. Thank you very much, Joseph. And I'll have you know that many G7 leaders are actually very fit. I mean, who doesn't want to see Emmanuel Macron take, take his shirt off and then maybe that sweater he's got on under that shirt? <laughs> Man goes through a lot of conditioner. Vlad continued. <laughs> To look good, it's necessary to stop abusing alcohol and other bad habits, do physical exercise, and take part in sports. Sorry to inform you, Vlad, but Boris Johnson <laughs> plays sport. <laughs> Is Wimbledon started? Wimbledon's happening, right? Wimbledon's going on, right? It's summertime, and the hottest trend is figuring out what to do in the wake of the Supreme Court's elimination of bodily autonomy. So let's head to the bathing suit area for The Late Show's new segment, Crotch Watch. <laughs> Overturning Roe might not be the Supreme Court's only kick to your groin, because in a concurring opinion, Justice Clarence Thomas said the court should also revisit decisions on the right to contraception, the right of gay couples to marry, and the overturning of sodomy laws. <laughs> which, among other things, would ban oral sex. And in response, I just want to say, Clarence Thomas can suck it. <laughs> With, and I mean that... And I mean that in the nicest way possible. That, I want to encourage that. With contraception on the judicial crosshairs, Folks are taking their genitals into their own hands, with men <laughs> rushing to get vasectomies and then very slowly walking home from them. <laughs> According to one urologist, before the Supreme Court's ruling, he received four or five vasectomy requests a day, but since the decision, that number has spiked to 12 to 18. That makes sense. The most effective forms of birth control for men are abstinence and vasectomies. They have a similar result but there's a vast deference. <laughs> Those, really, really. There you go. Someone, someone went to health class. Those, <laughs> those patient numbers are from Doug Stein, a Florida urologist known as the vasectomy king. Oh, I love vasectomy king. They have way better fries than Sackdonald's. <laughs> hmm. Next up, next up on news from downtown, a 72-year-old American has become the first person in the world diagnosed with a whistling scrotum. <laughs> Why was his scrotum whistling? He couldn't remember the words. <laughs> Apparently, that's from downtown. That joke is from way downtown. Apparently, the Ohio man was quickly sent to a hospital after he complained of a hissing noise <laughs> coming from his genitalia. 
leading women to ask, is that a snake in your pocket, or are you just happy to see me? Or third option, are your genitals hissing? <laughs> After taking some scans, uh, doctors discovered his lungs had collapsed, causing a buildup of air inside his body, which was escaping through an open wound on the left side of his scrotum. When he heard the diagnosis, his scrotum went... That's quality, Joe. That's a quality, Joe. That's a good one. It's a quality That's joke. a pretty good one, isn't it? Good. There you go. That's a pretty good one. There you go. <laughs> Last up in the crotches we're watching, an Austrian man has contracted super gonorrhea. It's extremely hard to diagnose because it looks like normal gonorrhea until it takes off its glasses. <laughs> apparently, apparently. <laughs> look. Up on this guy. <laughs> Apparently, the man got it after having unprotected sex on vacation, and it's not just a pesky souvenir because scientists are saying super gonorrhea poses a major global public health threat. And that's why we here at the Late Show have written a sing along PSA to raise awareness. A five, six, seven, eight. Super gonorrhea, now I've got a giant testy. It's a super strain, so penicillin will not help me. It feels like my junk just got sucked into a vacuum cleaner. Super gonorrhea, super really hurts my wiener. We got a great show for you tonight. There you go, there you go. Thank you, my friends. My guests are Heidi Klum and Ibram X. Kendi. But when we come back in honor of Pride Month, we've got a rainbow of jokes. Stick around.